very basic uh, conceptual like introduction to version control using Git and using GitHub. And then we're going to practice it. Uh, so this is very much aimed at beginners. Uh, so if you've got some Git experience, this might be all a bit obvious. Um, so first we're going to practice it outside of R uh, because the principles of version control apply more widely. Uh, and then we'll have a little break and then we'll try and do it within R itself. And I'm going to try to go slowly because there's quite a lot of jargon to learn. Uh, and I'm just going to put a link to the slides in the chat, but they're going to be on the screen most of the time. Um, okay, so yes, so why should you learn this from me? Well, I think Marianne is maybe a bit optimistic that I'm an expert, but I have been using R for a while and get and get up for a few years too, uh, both for PhD work and for my website. Uh, so I'm definitely not an expert, but um, I'm also not like too far from being a beginner, uh, which means that I haven't really forgotten what it was like getting started with Git and uh, version control. So if I can do it, then you probably can as well. And I also want to say thanks to Joseph uh, Casillas, who gave me permission to adapt his materials. So I went to his workshop once and found this quite a good way to get into version control. Uh, and I've made some changes. Okay, so there are three goals today. So firstly, uh, convince you that you should care about version control. Uh, secondly, to give you a basic introduction to Git and GitHub. And then finally, how to integrate them into your RStudio workflow. But hopefully you'll also want to use version control beyond when you're working in R. Uh, and I think it's important to understand kind of conceptually what's going on before we leap straight into R. So <laughs> there might not be some R for some time. I'm sorry, I know it's an R ladies meeting, but <laughs> don't worry, there will be some at the end. Uh, and in the event description, I talked about doing a bit of preparation. So hopefully you, you read that and saw that, which is to make sure that you have Git, uh, GitHub desktop and our studio ready to go, as well as making a GitHub account online. Uh, and I said I'd be happy to help if anyone was stuck getting set up, uh, but nobody got in touch with me. So I'm going to assume everyone is ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you are having any kind of technical issues, during presentation with installation or anything like that, I probably can't offer <laughs> individual technical support, but maybe other people in the chat can assist you uh, or possibly at the end. And we're also, we're also being recorded, so hopefully you can also have a go later on, if not. Uh, and as I said, we're going to have some exercises as we go, so you, should, you can try and do them live with me if you have done the preparation. If not, you're just welcome to watch and follow along. Okay. So uh, what is version control? So probably everyone's familiar with the scenario in the comic on the right hand side here. So you end up with these kind of horrible file names uh, if you're not using version control or you end up with a million different copies of the same file. Um, yeah, and we'd obviously like to avoid this. Um, but the advantages of version control aren't just limited to having fewer files and better file names. So version control can also uh, help you have a much more project oriented workflow. So while we're doing this workshop, I'm gonna encourage you to think about some of these questions about what you do currently, especially when you're working with R, but just generally when you're working on a computer uh, and how we might be able to improve that. Um, okay. So this flowchart might be familiar to some R users. It's from R for Data Science book. And this is basically the workflow that probably a lot of us have when it comes to analyzing uh, and communicating our data. And obviously there's lots of degrees of freedom here in how you might choose to analyze your data, uh, visualize it, et cetera. Um, so if this kind of process is familiar to you, then you want to be version controlling it and keeping track of the decisions you make and the changes that you make. So this is good for open science. It's good for when we are working in a team and we want to review our colleagues code, or if we just want to go back to an earlier version of our work and understand what we did in the past. Okay. Uh, so to do this kind of version control, uh, to do this kind of workflow process that's now highlighted in blue in the bottom left, you might end up with something on your computer that looks like this. So you have various folders and subfolders with things like data and scripts and so on. Um, 
And again, if this looks familiar to you, then ideally you should be version controlling this kind of project setup as well. Okay, so uh, what is version control? To give a definition, uh, it's basically a system that records changes to a file or a set of files over time so that you can recall those specific versions later on. And it's a really good way to manage your content, so manage your files and folders. Okay, so um, yeah, I assume people are fairly familiar with these kind of cloud services, like syncing services like Dropbox and so on, uh, where you might have a laptop and uh, or any computer uh, synced with something in the cloud. Uh, if you're not backing anything up at all, then you know, maybe you're living on the edge a little bit there. Um, but yeah, so GitHub is kind of a bit like this, uh, but it's a cloud-based repository for version control. Um, so yeah, you kind of have this upload and download process uh, and syncing. But how do we do this um, version control? Well, um, there's lots of different tools out there, but the most kind of common combination is using Git together with GitHub. Um, GitLab is another alternative to GitHub. Um, lots of universities have GitLab servers and so on. Um, Bitbucket is another one. And just by the way, this is the, uh, the uh, mascot of GitHub, the octopus cat. So don't ask me why, but um, we see a few more uh, of them as we go along. Okay. Um, so hopefully everybody followed the instructions beforehand and installed things, uh, like I said. I'm assuming yes. <laughs> um, okay, so what you're going to need, first of all, Git. So you can, uh, a lot of computers, well, yeah, you might already have this on your computer. Most likely you do. Lots of new computers do come with Git these days. Um, if not, you can install it. There's a link here for some troubleshooting if you are struggling. GitHub account, this is very quick. So if you've not done this yet, you might manage to do it in a few minutes, uh, which will need for exercise one. Make sure when you do pay attention to your username. Um, and there's also some benefits to using an academic email address if you have one. I think you can have private repositories. Um, and yeah, make sure you try and keep a fairly short username, avoid spaces and special characters, etc. And it's usually related to your real name. And hopefully you've done this too already. And the last thing is GitHub Desktop. So this is like a local interface for Git. It's a bit like having stabilizers on your uh, stabilizer wheels on your bike when you're learning to ride. It can make things a lot simpler for beginners. Um, but you don't technically need it. And some people would say, oh, I don't want to use that. I'd rather stick to the shell or the terminal or whatever you call it. Um, but yeah, to start with, I think it's a, it's a good way to introduce people. And then maybe later we can do most of our stuff within our studio if you're working with R mostly. Okay, so what are these things? Um, so Git is an open source version control system. Um, but yeah, basically it's a way of managing content. And here by content, we mean your files and folders. Um, yeah, so it keeps tracks keeps track of the changes that you make to your files. Um, oops, and that's kind of how it works. And like I said, it's similar to these kind of syncing services, but tends to be used more for code. Um, okay, and how does it work? Well, you can access it. Um, oh yeah, what did I want to say before that? Um, yeah, so as you um, make a change to a file, you can kind of take a snapshot of it, which is called committing. Uh, and then you basically take a picture of your repository, which is another word for your project folder. Uh, and generally in the past, most people have been using it uh, via the command line or the um, terminal or shell, it's called different things on different uh, computers. And this normally kind of scares people, right? Because the uh, shell terminal code looks a little bit like the matrix. Um, and this can kind of be a bit scary, even for people who are happy to code in R, right? Um, but yeah, like I said, we don't actually have to use it. We can start off with a friendlier tool like GitHub Desktop or use Git inside our studio later on. So what's GitHub? Uh, it's the online cloud interface to Git. And so it's a place where we then store these repositories that we make, so our projects, and then we can share them with other people and collaborate. 
um, might not be the most ethical tech company out there, which might be a consideration. So just so you're aware, it's not the only way to do this, but um, I think it's probably the most commonly used in a lot of areas. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so it's nearly time for our first exercise. But just to make sure we're 100% clear before we start, because it can be confusing. So Git is the version control content management system local, right? So it's on your own computer. It lets you manage and keep track of your files um, and the, the history of the changes to those files. And you do that within repositories. So these are kind of your project folders. GitHub, on the other hand, is the cloud-based hosting service. So it's online. And then it lets you manage those repositories once you've put them online. Uh, and then you can share them and, and collaborate with other people. Uh, oops, just to be extra sure, here's like a graphical representation of the same thing. But the bottom line is Git version control system. GitHub is cloud-based hosting service. OK, I hope that's clear, because uh, it can be very confusing at the start. OK, so it's time for our first exercise. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and create our own repository. So remember, a repository is like an online project folder. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be online, but it's going to be online on GitHub initially. Uh, and that's a folder that we'd like to track, track and do version control with. So we're going to uh, make a change to a file in this repository, uh, take a snapshot of that change that we made, which is called commit. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so even if you didn't install Git or GitHub Desktop, you should still be able to follow this if you made a GitHub online account. Okay, so now I'm going to make my GitHub a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to log in. And when you log in, it looks a little bit like almost like a social media website as a kind of newsfeed. Um, but what we're looking for is this green new button. So you should be able to see that on most pages. Uh, I think you can also click here and find your repositories and then click the new icon, but I can see it here already. So I'm going to click on it and, and you're welcome to follow along right um, at this point or uh, there'll be a chance to catch up in a second. So I'm going to give my repository a name. I'm just going to call it my repo. Um, I'm going to give it a little description. So this is just going to be a test repository. It's going to be public. And it's very important to click here, um, add a readme file. So readme files have a kind of special status. Um, and yeah, it's where you can describe what is in the repository, what are the contents of it, um, how to work with it, etc. And then I click the green create repository button. So just to catch up on my slides here. So we create a new repository, give it a name, my repo, add a readme file, and then click create repository. And then that's kind of it already for the first exercise almost. Uh, well done, that's great. Um, okay, we're gonna do a little bit more. So we're gonna click on this pencil icon uh, to edit it, I'm just going to add some text to the file. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, oh, and then I scroll down here to the bottom um, and click on commit changes. But before I do that, I'm just going to add a little uh, commit message here. So commit messages are really important. This is where you uh, describe the change that you've made. Um, so I'm just going to say, uh, a little line of text. It's not a very good message. You should try to be as descriptive but brief as possible um, because it will be helpful later when you want to review your code and maybe go back to an earlier version. So I click commit changes. Um, and why didn't that work? <laughs> Do I need to refresh it again? There we go. Okay, so refresh it page. Uh, and then we can see that my text has now appeared here. If I click on this history in the top right, I can see that this change is made. So I added a line of text 23 seconds ago. Um, yeah, simple as that. So we already got our repository uh, going. We've edited our readme file. Uh, I'm just going to show you all the steps again. So if people want to catch up, um, you can do that. 
I'll give you a minute or two. And if anyone has any questions for the chat, maybe feel free to ask in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to assume lack of questions means it's fairly straightforward. It's quite easy, right? Um, so I'll just give a little recap of what we learned in the first exercise. So repositories are projects. We commit changes to them. So we take a snapshot of a change that we think is important and then save it to the repository. And then Git keeps track of those changes. Um, and README files in uppercase. They have a kind of special status, so it's normally a text file that just explains the repository. Um, and think carefully about your names, so both your GitHub username, but also what you name your repository, what you name your files, try and avoid spaces, try to avoid uncommon characters, etc. Okay, so that first exercise was quite easy, <laughs> lots of hand-holding. Uh, and the second exercise, we are going to clone a repository. But these aren't clones, are they? I'm sorry to all the Star Wars fans. Um, but yes, yeah, so cloning means to make a copy of an online repository to our local machine. Um, so I'm going to do it first, and then you try to copy me afterwards. And this is where we're going to need a uh, GitHub test desktop in a minute. But I'll just explain the concept first. So currently, this a repo that we just made. My repo it exists in the cloud only, right? Um, and there's our readme file within the repository, although this kind of image represents the entire repository. And what we want to do is we want to clone it to our laptop, our computer, so that we have a local copy. And then, um, yeah, then we can kind of make changes locally on our computer uh, as we work on our files. So then we go through a whole series of steps and we save a bunch of uh, times we take take these snapshots and then at the end of the day um, we're finished and we want to uh, save our changes commit our changes one final time and then push them back to the cloud to make sure that our um, cloud version is up to date right so in this previous slide here you'll see that when you work locally it doesn't automatically update the cloud right uh, that's why we need to push again to make sure that our two uh, our local and our GitHub copies are up to date. Okay. Um, yes. So I'll just walk through what to do. So you're welcome to kind of start copying as, as I go. Um, but I'll show you at the same time. So I'm going to open up GitHub desktop and you might need to sign in first. Uh, I'm already signed in. And then I'm going to go to File and then Clone Repository. And then I want to find a repository. So I'm going to type it in here, my repo. OK, and it's figured it out already. If it's not appearing in the list, you might have to click on this little refresh button here. And then I want to think about where I put it. So normally, I would say don't put things on the desktop because that's a bad place. Uh, but for the simplicity of this workshop, I'm going to put it there. Um, Okay, so it's just cleaning quickly. And now I can see that it has appeared on my desktop. So I'm going to open it. Here we go. Uh, so the contents, it has a git file and a readme. And then hopefully when I open the readme file, we can see um, the change that I made online, right? So GitHub is confusing. But I'm going to change that now to uh, GitHub. Easy actually, and then save it and close it. Okay, so I can close that. And now in GitHub uh, desktop, we can see that it has noticed what has happened, so it realizes that a file has changed. 
Um, we have this red text here with a minus in front of it showing what was deleted. We have this green text with a plus showing what was added. Uh, if you're red, green, colorblind, you can use these uh, columns here. So on the left uh, is what has been added and on the right is, sorry, other way around, on the left is what has been removed and the four on the right means that something been, has been added on row four. And um, so we still haven't, we need to now commit this um, okay, so this is going to be like writing our commit message here in the bottom left. So I'm going to type change my mind as my commit message. And then I click commit. Uh, okay. And now it says here that I have one local commit that is waiting to be pushed to GitHub, right? So all I've done so far is taken a snapshot. I've said to Git, this is an important change. I want you to pay attention to it. But if I were to refresh my GitHub repository here, uh, we don't see the change yet because I haven't pushed it. Right? I haven't pushed it up to the cloud. So there's some nice spatial metaphors going on here. Um, okay, so then I'm just going to click push to the origin. So the origin is the original copy because it originated on, in GitHub uh, in the cloud. Okay, now when I refresh here, uh, I can see my change. Okay. So those are the steps uh, of what to do. I will leave that open and give people a minute or two. Um, And again, feel free to ask anything in the chat if you're stuck. But... Okay, this is a question here that's asking, could you show us opening the README in GitHub desktop again? I can't work out how to actually get into it. Yep, that's a good point. And I kind of went a bit too quickly there. Let me show you again. So you don't actually open your uh, file within GitHub desktop, right? So um, all I did in GitHub desktop was um, clone the repository initially. Then I had to look on my computer for where I'd cloned it to. So for me, it was on my desktop. Uh, so I didn't really show that super clearly. Um, but I went to my computer, my desktop, uh, and then I clicked my replay. And the readme file, oh, sorry, is a markdown file. Uh, so for me, that opens by default with like a notepad text editor. Uh, if you're struggling to open it, you can right click on it and click open with, and you might have another uh, program that can open it. You can even open it within our studio itself if you have our handy, uh, and you should be able to open it in there, even if it's not a, a markdown file. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, all good. I have too many monitors and I'm trying not to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let me get that out of the way in case we want to read the instructions. Okay, so I'm going to move on now and just do a quick recap of what we just did. Oh, another question, sorry. Once you open it elsewhere, can you show pushing it back to cloud again? Um, so you mean just like once you've made the change, can you show the pushing steps again? Um, yes, I can do that. If that's all right, so I'm going back to my desktop and I'm going to open my repo. I'm going to make a different change this time. I'm going to say, oh, keyboard will cooperate. Keyboard is very easy, actually. So I save it, close it. 
can go back to GitHub Desktop. Oh my god, have I closed GitHub Desktop? That's annoying. Can use that. <laughs> Just one sec while I open GitHub Desktop again. Uh, yep, so here it's picked up on the change automatically, right? So my current repository is my repo, that's where you should be. And then the, the steps here to do are to first commit and then push. So we write a commit message. Uh, I'm gonna say I came even more sure. That's my commit message. This is a terrible <laughs> message to be honest. Uh, and then I click commit. And then I click push, right? So I kind of showed you on GitHub in between those two steps earlier, just to show that it hadn't made the change just yet, but now I should have done. Okay, now we see there's no local changes. And if I refresh here, um, my very is also there. And yeah, there's a comment here just explaining that. Yep, that's how you could also find your file to work on it. Okay, so let's just do the recap. So um, we can also clone repositories um, to our computers. So cloning means to copy them from the cloud to our local uh, laptop, desktop, whatever. And then we carry on working as normal uh, and we commit changes. So we take snapshots when we've made an important change uh, and when we are ready for the day or done, or, you know, it depends how often you want to push, right? Uh, if you want to be careful, you can push after every commit you make, or you maybe could just do it at the end of the day. Uh, but pushing just means to send your changes up to the cloud uh, copy, which is the original one. Then those changes should be visible on GitHub. Uh, and again, always make sure to think carefully about where you save things, where your repositories are saved locally so that you can find them. Uh, you can keep practicing this procedure. You can clone things on GitHub and edit them, commit uh, and push. So you can do this with practice repositories just to get the hang of it. Um, and yeah, don't be afraid to like start all over again. You can delete your repository, create a new one, um, play around until you get the basics. Okay. Um, so let's review what this kind of means for our workflow. So we've got this workflow of like cloning and then editing and we commit these changes to the cloud or we push them to the cloud sorry we commit the changes then we push them to the cloud uh, so now here's our file in the cloud for example um, and maybe like as the week goes on you um, get some you fix some typos you get some comments from your supervisor etc or your colleague um, and then you build up this really nice like version history commit history of all of our previous changes and then it means that if we need to go back to a previous version, turns out that oh, our supervisor was right with all their comments, I want to go back to their version, we can do that. I'm not going to explain how to do reverting today or going back, but it's possible and it's not so complicated. Um, what this also means is that we can work from different computers so we can uh, fetch and pull the changes. So just like you can push to the cloud, you can also pull from the cloud. Uh, so this is kind of useful in these hybrid times. People are starting to go back to the office, maybe work uh, on an office computer some of the time, sometimes work on a laptop. Uh, and it means you shouldn't need to worry about USB devices, et cetera. Um, okay, so this leads us, and you, well, you'll see that this kind of also uh, maybe facilitates collaboration once you can understand how different people uh, can pull uh, from the cloud and then work in a different place. So exercise three, uh, this is where I might lose you. So that's why the, there's a Grim Reaper mascot. Um, and I'll just show you what we're gonna do here. So here we're gonna collaborate. We're gonna use forks to collaborate. Uh, and these are the steps. Uh, maybe you don't start just yet. In fact, you can't start just yet because I haven't given you the link. <laughs> but um, what we're gonna do here uh, is basically very similar to exercise two. In fact, steps two to six are what we just did. There's just something new at the start and at the end. So we're going to fork a, a repository for some from somebody else. Um, so I'm just going to put the link in the chat to uh, the repository that you're going to fork. 
uh, and forking just means making a copy of it on GitHub, right? So you are copying it to your GitHub account, and then it's your own copy that you can do what you like with, and you can then uh, clone it to your computer and carry on working on it locally. Um, and then at the end, so I'm going to ask you to do the same thing where you make a change uh, locally and push that back to your copy. And then at the end, I'm going to ask you to do something called submitting a pull request, which means um, that you are suggesting your change to the original version of the repository or the file. Uh, so that, and then it's up to the uh, owner of the original repository to decide whether they want to integrate your changes or not. So you can see how this is useful if you're working on code together. Um, okay, look. And I'll just explain a little bit more about what this means conceptually. So, um, so we've got this GitHub practice repository. Let me, in fact, just show you that it does exist on GitHub. Um, here it is. Um, yeah, and oops. basically it's a, yeah, it's kind of set up how a, a repository uh, would look like for projects that I'm working on. So it's got subfolders like data and scripts and things like that. You can also edit one of the files in there if you like. Uh, you could also just edit the readme. You can see that people have used this before. I've given a similar talk before. Uh, and people have added a line of text just to the readme as an easy change uh, as a pull request. But just to go back to this conceptually for a second on the slides. Um, so yeah, we have this repository, GitHub practice in the cloud. Everyone at this talk, you're all the little rainbow laptops around it. Uh, what I'm gonna ask you to do is fork. So make uh, your own copy of the repository for your own on your own GitHub account and then clone it and work on it locally. And when you're done, you'll push your changes back to your local or not local, your uh, GitHub cloud. And then finally, you're going to make a pull request, which is to suggest your change to the original version. Okay, um, now, I can't actually show you, oh there, and there's just a opto cat version of the same thing. So I can't actually fork or copy my own repository. See so how it's grayed out here because this is my repo. So I can't show you how to do the forking. Uh, so we're just gonna do um, something experimental now and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna ask <laughs> my glamorous assistant in the other room, my partner, to uh, just show you what it looks like at her end and then uh, fork, well, I'll do all the steps, so I'll stop sharing. And hopefully she can share her screen now. Yes, hopefully Leah should be able to start. Right. Yeah, it's perfect. There we go. Okay, so I'll just walk her through what she's gonna do. So she's gonna click on fork in the top right. Uh, and then you can see in the top left here, uh, it now has her username in front of the name of the repository. Okay, it seems to have added a two, so maybe she's already done this before. <laughs> uh, you can also see where it's come from, right? So it's got uh, underneath it says forked from, so you can see where it came from. Uh, and now the steps are the same as before. So it's going into GitHub desktop to clone it. Uh, so you then click on file. Oh, oh yeah, you can do it that way too, add clone repository. Uh, and then you type in the github underscore practice and then I think it has a two at the end of your end. Um, and then if it's not showing up, you click on this refresh, there it is. And she's going to save it to documents, github, and then you click client. And then uh, this box will come up here, so it'll ask what you would like to do. Uh, I, are you going to contribute to the original project or are you just going to work on it on your own? Uh, so we can leave it as the first option here because we do want to edit my original. But you can also fork other things and never make your suggestions to the original project. This is another way to find your file. So you can right click on the repository and then show in Explorer, at least on Windows. Uh, and then uh, I guess you've got to pick a file to make a change to. Um, so we're just going to add an extra line of text, I guess, in the readme file. Uh, 
Okay, and then save it and close. And then you can see in GitHub Desktop, the um, changes appeared in green and red. Uh, add a commit message. Um, or <laughs> whatever, it really doesn't even matter. <laughs> and then click commit. Okay, and now we need to push this commit. Great, so now if we go back to GitHub, we can see if you refresh that page, uh, we have this message here. It says, so if you scroll back up a little bit, branches one commit ahead of mine. So this uh, repository has a change that my original doesn't yet have. So we want to suggest this change to the original. So we're going to go to uh, click on pull requests now here on the top left. And then in green, you click new pull request. Uh, and this is just uh, showing you the change again. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the change in green and red when you compare it with uh, the version in my repository. And then if you click green, create pull request, uh, that sends that change to me. Okay. Well, and you have to click it once more. It's a lot of green buttons to click. <laughs> uh, and then that says there's no conflicts. So hopefully it will be fine and it gets to mine. So thank you very much. Uh, I think you can stop sharing your screen now. And we'll go back to sharing mine. Okay. Um, so those are all the steps that you need to do. Uh, I can now refresh this. Oops. And I can see that I've got four pull requests already. So some people are already quick. Um, so that's great. So I can see that they're coming in already, but I'll give everyone a couple more minutes uh, with the instructions here on what to do. Um, I'm not going to try and merge them all right now because that could be a bit of a mess, but I will, I promise that I'll <laughs> integrate all of your changes at the end of the workshop. Uh, and when you do, you should get a little email. Uh, and I think you even get a badge on GitHub saying, well done, you did your first pull request, if it's your first time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll give you a few minutes to have a go at that. Okay, there's a question here about how do you clone to your computer? Um, so I'll just go back to that step again. Uh, so the cloning is done in GitHub Desktop. Uh, so assuming you've done the forking already, uh, you would then click uh, here, File, Clone Repository. And then you type in the name of the repository. And like I said, it might not show up initially. And you might have to click this little refresh button. Um, but it should then appear and then you choose where you want to save it and then click this clone button. Okay, there's one more. Yeah. Um, okay, there's another question here. When would you just commit something versus pushing it? Um, well, I think, I guess I kind of think of committing as like just clicking save, whereas pushing is almost the kind of equivalent of like uploading or emailing your work at the end of the day in terms of how people used to do things maybe or, or people do things without version control uh, but when I'm working in GitHub or editing my code within our studio then I tend to push pretty much immediately after committing so I think it's a personal preference basically. Uh, I'm sorry to hear you're not finding the repo, Heidi. So, um, yeah, hopefully you saw the link that's in the chat and the forking worked, but 
Oh, you got it. Okay, that's great. Okay, got six pull requests now, which is great. Um, okay, so I'm just going to do a recap of that exercise, and then maybe we'll have like another five minute break just for everybody to have a break and people can finish working on their pull requests if they want to, or you can just go to the loop or something. <laughs> and then when we come back, we'll do this kind of stuff directly in our studio. Okay, so what have we just done? Uh, what are the key ideas? We can fork, which means to copy other people's repositories online. So we make an online copy on our GitHub account. Uh, and then like before, we can clone it to our computer uh, and make changes locally. Um, then we are working on our file all day and then we push the changes when we're ready back to our forked version of the repository. Uh, and if we have a great idea or something we want to integrate in the original repository that we forked, we can make this kind of suggestion using a pull request. Um, yeah, and it's a good thing to do to learn how to, well, learn how other people code, right? So you can, there's loads of code that's freely available on GitHub that you can just fork if you want to see how people use R, people use whatever you're interested in learning how to do. There will be some code that's freely available. You can fork it and then you can clone it to your computer and play around with it. Likewise, you can make pull requests and contribute to people's projects. It's really fulfilling. If you've helped a little bit with sometimes massive projects, it could just be fixing a typo. People will still be grateful. Um, and yeah, again, don't worry too much. You're probably not going to accidentally like ruin somebody's work because you're generally making the change within your copy of the repository. And then uh, it's up to the creator or the, the owners of the original repository whether they accept your change, right? So um, it's their responsibility if you do something and they accept it as a pull request. Um, okay, so I'm, yeah, I'm going to suggest we have like a couple minute break just to everybody. Some people are still working on that. Free to put questions in the chat. I'm just gonna have another drink.
to Derek. Should we carry on? See, there's been some questions, so I'll try and go through those. Um, so first one is I'm getting stuck at create pull request. The button is grayed out. And when I go to phrase repo, pull request, new pull request, then I'm not sure what's next. Um, and then I saw there was a few questions follow up to that. So you've done all the steps. Um, <clears throat> are you sure that you're looking? It might be that you need to look at your version of the repository rather than mine. So remember that you cloned it first. Um, and then I think you click on the pull request there. Uh, but it's kind of the one of the things that would be tricky to do without getting you to show your screen. Um, but yeah, try looking in the in your version of the repository to make the pull request first. I, I've also got stuck in the past trying to find it. Um, I'll just go through the next question. So when working simultaneously with others, how do you update your local version to whatever you, the latest version is on GitHub? So how do I see some of the changes that other folks in the workshop are doing on my local file? Do I need to reclaim or just update the file somehow? Um, okay, so in terms of like the current workshop, um, I haven't made any of these changes yet to the original file, right? I, I can see that there's a bunch of these requests and I have to go through them kind of one by one, basically, and uh, accept them or reject them, merge them uh, if I want to. And then if I make all those changes, then yes, my online version will be more up to date than yours, uh, your local one, and also my local one as well, right? Uh, and at that point, you would need to click on here, so fetch origin, which is like pulling the changes. So you push, now we need to pull, pull the changes down. Um, and that's really important to do. So when you are working with other people, as you say, um, before you start doing anything, right, you should pull before you start working because somebody might have been working on a file while you were not working. Um, and you need to make sure that you're working on the most updated version, uh, which is probably on GitHub uh, before you start carrying on working locally. I hope that helps a bit. Uh, and this next question, just to get an idea of your daily workflow, do you clone a repository more often or just once and then save the files and push up whichever interval? Because if you're working on the same computer, the local file is the same as the pushed one, right? Um, so I don't need to clone it anymore. Cloning is just the kind of initial, making the initial copy to my computer. And then I have a copy. Uh, and then, like I said, you need to click on this fetch origin thing, which is uh, like pulling your changes down from the cloud. Um, so yeah, you just clone it once and then you have one local copy. Uh, but, and then you say, if you're working on the same computer, the local file is the same as the pushed one. Um, yes, if you're working alone, right? But for example, if I accept all of these changes, uh, all of these pull requests that people have made, then the online version is ahead, right? So then there's the difference. And then, uh, so obviously when you're working with other people, you have to be careful. Um, wow, three thank yous when I scroll down. So I'm glad <laughs> I've answered everybody's questions. Um, okay, so yeah, welcome back everybody. And uh, let's refresh this, so I've had quite a few pull requests come in, 10 or 11 of them, that's really great. So I'll try, as I said, I'll do that after the workshop, <laughs> I'll merge them. And right, so you're probably wondering, uh, how can we do all this within R? This is an R ladies talk, you haven't even opened R yet. Um, so yeah, we probably don't wanna be switching between GitHub desktop and R Studio all day, right? Especially, um, well, yeah, it would just be a pain. Uh, if you can do it within R Studio, which fortunately you can. Uh, and the way to do this is using our project files. So if we think about what I asked you at the start, about your workflow, how you organize your files, if we think about that, we combine that with an R project file, uh, then we can kind of have a good workflow with version control and Git as well. Uh, so yeah, so if your project, if what you're working on in R involves kind of R scripts, R markdown, etc., you should be using R Studio projects. Uh, if you've not heard of them before, you might be wondering what they are. So these R proj files, what they do is they create an environment that is just uh, 
yeah, limited to the current thing that you're working on, the current folder, um, which can also help focus your attention, right? So in the past, I've been very guilty of having like 10 <laughs> completely unrelated R scripts left open within R Studio, which is bad. Um, and they also integrate well with GitHub. Uh, so yeah, they help you kind of have this project oriented workflow from the start. Okay, so now I'm going to move to our studio. Uh, and we can try and link everything together with Git so that we can work there. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different ways to get set up here. Um, so when you want to make a new R Studio project, you go to File, New Project, and then we have these three options that come up and R decides to cooperate. So depending on your circumstances, what you already have, uh, you might want to click. We'll go through all three of these. So the first one is when you want to make a completely new project that, uh, that doesn't have anything yet and you would like it to be version controlled as well, you can click here. Um, the second one is when you might already have a folder or a project where that's related to R and you would now like to add version control to it. And the third option is when you already have an existing GitHub repository online, but it's not linked to R Studio in any way yet and you haven't got it locally. So we can link those. But before we click on any of those possibilities, first we need to enable version control in R. So we're going to click on tools and then global options. And then we go down here to where it says Git SCN. And then we make sure that this box at the top is tipped saying enable, enable version control. Uh, for me, it already is, but I guess a lot of you probably won't be. And you might have to restart our studio after ticking this, I'm not 100% sure. The next important thing is this Git executable box. So this is the pathway to where you have Git installed on your computer. Um, if your computer already had Git or you've installed it successfully, our studio is fairly clever and it might have already worked it out. Uh, if it hasn't, then you have one or two options. Unfortunately, one of them is going into like the shell or the terminal. So if I click here on, oops, I'm just going to search for shell. I think on my computer it's called command prompt, but it could be called terminal or uh, shell. I'm not 100% sure what it would be like on Linux or a Mac. Uh, and what you can do here is on Windows, you can type where git. And then it gives me a path of where it is. I think on Mac or Linux, you can type which kit, and then it will give you the path. But I'm not on Mac or Linux, so that didn't work. Um, interestingly, it seems to be different to what I have here. I think I may somehow have two copies of Git on my computer. Um, I know that it works, but so um, that's one option. If you are sure that you've installed Git and you still can't find it, then there is some more troubleshooting help. Uh, here at this link, uh, which I put in the chat. But hopefully people have something here already. Um, the next thing we need to do is create this RSA key. Uh, so what this means is it's kind of like a secure link between our studio and your GitHub account. I already have one, but I'm going to overwrite it to show you. So I click create RSA key. Um, and I think this should be filled in already with where it's going to be created. Uh, you don't need to put a password, you can just click create. I'm going to overwrite mine. This might take a second or two. And then you get this really interesting looking random art, I think it's called, uh, which is kind of like your complicated key. Um, and close that. And then I think, yeah, I closed it, but click view public key again here. And then this is the thing that you need to copy. Okay, so I hope people are still with me. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna copy this now. Uh, close it, apply and okay, close that. Now when I go back to my GitHub account, I'm gonna go to my profile and click on settings. So on the menu here, then I go to 
SSH and GPG queues on the left here. Uh, and then you probably don't have one here already, right? So I had one, I'm gonna delete my old one. Uh, just to show you how to set it up. I'm gonna click new SSH key in green. And I'm gonna give it the title RStudio so that I know what is being linked here. So I'm linking R to GitHub. And I paste what I had on the clipboard, this thing that starts SSH-RSA. And then click the green add SSH key button. Okay, so now I have a key here called RStudio. Uh, and I hope that works for people. Uh, I might just give it a minute in case anyone has any questions. Um, but if you can't get this set up right now, it's fine. You know, we can, I can answer some questions at the end, or yeah, I'm happy to be emailed. Um, okay, nothing has come in so far. So <laughs> I'm hoping that people are still with me. Um, but if not, don't worry and just try to follow what I'm doing here at least. Uh, so now we should be ready to try linking uh, our R projects to version control. So we go back to what I showed you before, file, new project. Uh, and I'm gonna start with the one at the bottom here because I think this is the easiest one. So this is where you um, already have a repository on GitHub or uh, that is not connected to your local computer and you want to start doing version control and link it to RStudio. So we click on that version control, then we click Git. Uh, and now you see that it wants us to put in a repository URL. So we're gonna go back to GitHub. Um, and yeah, we can't use one that we've already like cloned to our computer, so we can't use my repo. So let's just create a new repository quickly. I clicked on this plus icon here to do it, plus new repository. Um, what do I want to call it? Um, online repo. Uh, and then I'm going to say, I want to carry on working in our studio. Okay. Um, I'm also going to click add a readme. It's good to get into the habit of doing that. And then I click create repository. And then what I need to do is click on this little arrow next to the code in green and copy the link. So I can click on this button here with two squares to copy it. And then I can paste it in here. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop. And then I click create project. Okay, so that has successfully cloned to my desktop. I'll just show it to you to prove it's true. Um, there it is. Okay, so on my desktop, and it's called online repo. If I click on the readme, I can see the message uh, that I typed on GitHub. It's also created an R project file and this git ignore thing as well. So these are kind of things that automatically get created when you create a repository and when you create an R project file. Okay, but let's look at our studio. So we can see these things here within our project. So the good thing about using R projects is um, it can show us all of our files together. And when we start uh, create a new R script or markdown file, uh, it's going to offer to save it in the right place uh, from the word go, which is good. And you'll also notice, if you're still with me, that um, here, over here in the top right, I've now got this Git uh, pane like menu that wasn't there before. So I click on that and I can see that I've got two files here. So this is a little bit like what you had in GitHub Desktop earlier. Um, notice that the readme file is not there, right? So the readme file is already in the cloud. It's already up to date. Um, Whereas these two things are only on my local machine, right? And they've just been created. So we, we still need to like tell Git that this is an important change and then push them to the cloud version. So the R project file 
and the git ignore don't exist on the online repository yet. If we want to send them there, then this is similar to what we did before. There's just one extra step where we select them or stage them, it's called. A lot of jargon. Uh, and then we click commit. So we're doing all of this within our studio now, which is cool. Like before, we can write a commit message. So I'm just going to say initial commit. And then I click commit first. So remember, it's always commit before pushing. Uh, I get my message here saying that I'm uh, ahead of the origin because I haven't pushed yet. And I click the green arrow to push. And then if I go back to my repository, so you'll get these messages that come up that look a bit confusing, but it's not giving me any errors, which is always nice. Let me refresh that now. Okay, so we can see that our, our project and the gitignore file have just been added 30 seconds ago. So these things are now linked. Uh, now if I want to carry on working in R, I can just open an R script. Um, I don't know, start typing some code. Maybe I want to load the tidyverse. Uh, and then I realize, okay, I need to save my script. This is what I was saying earlier. It will automatically, uh, an R project will automatically offer to save it in the right place. I could even do something uh, which is also good practice. So like make a script folder first if I want to be really organized in my repository. So I'm going to um, give the script a useless name, <laughs> but at least I put it in a script folder. Uh, okay, and now you can see that it's appeared in this top right pane of Git. So Git is tracking it and knows that there is a change that has been made. Um, and I can do the same thing, right? So I can click on it, commit it, um, click that to stage it, sorry, then commit it. I'm going to write add a script, commit it, and push. Okay, that all seems to have worked. And if I go back to my repository now, I've got a scripts folder, and I've also got my R script inside it. And I can click on it and you can see my line of code. So you can see how this is practical, like useful for uh, keeping track of your R code. <laughs> okay, but that was just one way of how to do this, right? So that was the easiest way, I said, <laughs> unfortunately, um, where you create a repository online first. So I think that's what I would recommend always uh, in terms of workflow is just to create a repository on GitHub, then, uh, yeah create the project within R and enter the link to it. That's the easiest way to get set up. But I'm going to show you the other two options here. So let's close this project called online repo. Come on R. And then when I click file, new project, um, we'll now try the first one. So imagine we're starting from total scratch. So we don't have anything yet. We want to make a new project, click new project, give it a new name. So I'm going to say this is a brand new, put it on the desktop, and it's important that I click here, create a Git repository. So Git starts tracking it. Again, I have it on my desktop now. So that is what R has just created. Our project file with a Git, uh, directory that's tracking changes to this repository and git ignore file. And you can see uh, the files here as well. So the other two ones were kind of hidden files, but these two show up here. And in the top right, I have my git pane. Now we can commit um, our files when we do it this way. Um, but you'll see in a second that we can't push. Um, and let me just write initial commit. So I can commit, but you'll see that the pull and push buttons are grayed out. 
and you might be wondering why. And that's because we don't have um, an online repository linked to this yet. So there's nowhere on GitHub to send this to yet. We only have a local repository. Uh, so this is where you have two options. Either you can do it the terminal, the complicated shell coding way, or you can go back to GitHub desktop, which I seem to have closed for a second time despite needing it. Um, the good thing about this is we're not going to have to keep switching to GitHub Desktop and RStudio. This is just to get the repository online and then afterwards these buttons will reappear and we can carry on working. Okay, so in GitHub Desktop, I'm going to click Add here. I think you can do it this way too. So File, Add Local Repository. And I have to find where I put it. So I look on my computer, I put it on my desktop and it's called brand new project. Then when I click add repository, um, you can see that this button appears here, which is publish the repository. Okay, so I've already made a commit. Uh, I just need to push it, publish it in this case. Um, I can decide whether I want the online repository to be private or public. I can write a description saying that I'm not going to. <laughs> I click publish and that has now been pushed. Let's go back to GitHub and check. So I click on my uh, profile icon and I click my repositories. So I can see that brand new project has appeared. So that has worked. And one naughty thing is that I haven't got a readme yet, so I should add a readme to describe what this repository is uh, so that other people who might look at it on GitHub uh, can, yeah, understand what's going on here, but I made it private. So, but still it's good to add a readme as well for your own knowledge, right? So you might forget how everything is organized here. Um, and like I said, now these buttons, uh, the blue and green, the pull and push buttons have reappeared. So we could do the same things we did before. We could, I don't know, let's make it our markdown this time. I'm not going to give it good titles. Um, just going to leave all of that. But when I save it, it automatically saves um, the file name. It automatically saves it in the R project, which is great. And so it appears in our list uh, in the bottom here of our files. And it also appears in the top right because this is something that doesn't exist online yet. So from now on, we can start to edit our code and then uh, commit and push and pull within our. So I'll just do that quickly, just for completeness sake. So add uh, our markdown. And commit and then push. And then if I refresh it here, we now have a brand new project that's all set up with our project file and our markdown file as well. And it's also being tracked by Git and it's on it's on GitHub and it's local as well. So that was the second way of doing things. And I'll just show you the third. Um, do, do, do. I need to close my project again. Okay, so the final thing, this might apply to quite a lot of people here, is you have some work that you've already done in R. Uh, you maybe have even an R project file already. It doesn't have to be an R project file. Um, but you've got some R work in a folder and you want to start adding version control to it. So again, go to File, New Project. Um, and this time we click on Existing Directory. Um, and then we find it on our computer. So I think I have one I made earlier on my desktop for this purpose. So I have an existing local project, right? So it doesn't exist on GitHub yet. It's just 
a folder that maybe has some R files in it. I click create project. Uh, and what's different this time is we don't have a Git uh, panel in the top right. Uh, so what we need to do is set this up manually. So it's a bit of an extra step. We click tools, project options this time, not global options. Um, go to Git. And then here we need to click uh, Git as our version control system. And then when this message comes up, do you want a new Git repository for this project? You click yes. Uh, and we might need to restart R. Which we'll just do quickly. Okay, so now we've got the Git tab in the top right as well, and we can do the same thing again. We've already got our R project file, we've got our Git ignore file. Um, yeah, should we just uh, do that as well? Let's add another R script just to prove that we're doing some R today. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I just want to load ggplot. Let's do some visualization maybe. So again, I'm in my project file already. I'm going to um, create a new subfolder because it's good practice, right? So maybe I've got my plots folder for this. I'm going to use ggplot to do some database. This is my database script. So visualization. Um, and then, yeah, we can see that everything is ready to be uh, committed and pushed. So I'm going to select everything. And then commit. Just type the initial commit and click commit. And oh yeah. Uh, same thing again. I forgot. I was like, why are these grayed out? Uh, so this is similar to the second version where we need to go back to GitHub desktop, um, click on file, uh, add local repository, and find it again. So mine is called existing local project. Click add. And I've already done the commit within R Studio. Now I can publish this repository. Um, yeah, so and so I click publish and then same thing again. And then I just go back to GitHub and check if it's there or not. So my profile and my repositories. And there it is, existing local project. So these are the three here that we created with or connected to our studio. So the three different ways of doing it. Um, like I say, I think the first one is the easiest and the quickest um, because you don't need to switch back into GitHub desktop. Um, okay, I have questions. Sorry, can you do that last up again after you committed from our studio? For the repo that didn't exist yet on GitHub. Um, let me see. <laughs> so it's a bit tricky now because it's now on there. Um, but basically, what I did was I had uh, a file, a folder on my computer. I had just like this one file in it, I think. Just my readme. Uh, and then the steps where that I went file, new project. And then I clicked on existing directory. Uh, and then I found it again. I'm not going to overwrite it or whatever, but I clicked create project. And then, yeah, sorry, I think I figured out what you mean now. So there was that extra step in between because this Git panel didn't appear immediately. So we had to click on tools. And then project options instead of global options. 
And then we go to Git. Make sure Git is selected here. And then you might have to restart Opera Studio. Uh, and then it should be pretty much the same as before. So make something <laughs> in R. Uh, you can make a commit here once the files have some changes. So if I just add a space and save it, you'll see that there's another change to commit. We can do the committing here, but until it exists online, we can't, these will be grayed out initially, yeah? So um, we need to make sure that we publish it in GitHub Desktop. So just to repeat that step again, um, you go to GitHub Desktop and we click File, Add Local Repository, and then we just find where it is on our computer. Um, I don't know if I can do this over and over again. Kind of already there, right? Um, yeah, and and then if it's a, a new repository that's not online yet, it'll have this publish button, right? If you've already done the commit. I hope that makes sense. I also had another question earlier. I'm sorry, I missed this one. Direct question that was about RSA keys. So someone already has an RSA key and is pretty sure that they don't want to destroy or overwrite them. I think I need to add them to SSH key agent. Is that correct, please? I think this is where I'm not enough of an expert to say for sure. So yeah, uh, I hope hopefully nobody overwrote a key that they potentially thought they might need. Uh, yeah, I think that one is unfortunately beyond me unless anybody else here can add any input. I can't say I understand the full details of these keys. Um, I hope that was clear. I feel like I've talked for a very long time without <laughs> uh, too many people saying stuff. So maybe if you if you are able to follow that, you can <laughs> also please send some sign of life in the chat or that, that made sense to some people. Um, yeah, that's basically uh, most of what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to go back to my slides uh, just for a little conclusion. Okay, so I showed you three different ways to do the GitHub integration in our studio. Um, oh, this is an interesting extra point. So you can have a uh, studio project like nested inside a larger version control project. So you might be working on a much bigger project and you want to version control everything, but only a small part of it is related to R. So that's possible. I haven't done that yet. What you have to be very careful not to do is to put a GitHub repository inside a GitHub repository. That will, that will not end well. Um, try and avoid that if you can. Um, okay, so let's just do a quick recap of the jargon that we learned today. And it's nearly been an hour and a half, so <laughs> we need it. Um, so yeah, repo is a repository. Think of it as your project. It's generally equivalent to a folder. Uh, when you commit something, you are saying this is an important change. So we take a snapshot and we say that get, you need to pay attention to this. Um, when we clone something, we uh, make a local copy of something by uh, getting it down from GitHub in the cloud. Uh, when we push something to the cloud, uh, then we are basically sending our commits, sending our changes uh, to our online cloud repository. Uh, pulling is the reverse, um, and it's remember, as I said earlier, it's good to pull at the start of a day's work, especially if you're collaborating with people, right? So to make sure that you haven't missed people's changes. I think generally Git also is kind of clever and notices that you're not working on the latest thing, but it's good practice to, uh, and it will warn you. But yes, it's good practice to try to pull first before you carry on working on a collaborative project. Forking is making a copy in the cloud. Um, so copying somebody else's repository to your online repositories. Uh, so that's all online. And a pull request is when you have a suggestion that you want to make to the original code. Uh, and then you send it to the owner of the repository who can decide if they want to integrate it or not. Obviously, there's a lot more jargon. It's <laughs> unfortunately one of those kind of fields in computer science. Uh, so some things you might want to do in future are branches. Uh, so you can, I don't even know if I want to try to explain some of these things, but obviously it can get more complicated. Uh, branches is 
yeah, when um, you want you to say, okay, this is a, a kind of certain point where we um, don't want to edit uh, any further, but we take it on a different route and uh, that's a really bad explanation, which is why I'm going to stick to the basics. <laughs> um, and merge conflicts can happen. So it, it could happen when multiple people edit the same thing at the same time and they haven't got the latest version of the file. So it doesn't uh, fit together very well and you have to figure out how to resolve that. Uh, and obviously there's lots of things you can do in the command line. So not everyone is a fan of GitHub desktop. In fact, some people I think uh, within the R community don't like it very much uh, and would prefer people to do things in the command line. I think it can maybe cause problems with where Git gets saved on your computer. So maybe that's why I have two copies of Git on my computer. It hasn't caused me any issues so far, but possibly for more advanced things that I'm not an expert enough for, maybe it causes problems. Um, yeah, so hopefully you weren't thrown in the deep end too much today. I hope that was all clear. And here's just a list of some other resources. So the first two uh, are particularly relevant to R, um, Hattie Wickham and Jenny Bryan. Jenny Bryan, I know, does not like GitHub desktop, <laughs> but I found it useful to get started. Uh, the others uh, are less specific to R, but uh, related to Git and um, GitHub in general. And these links should all work if you have the slides. I can put the link to the slides again in the chat. And I think that's it. So thank you very much for the invitation. Um, and for everybody who are attending, thank you to the interpreters. <laughs> um, and thank you also to Joseph for the original workshop and the changes I've made <laughs> to the materials. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Greg, for that comment. I saw that there was another comment. Oh, oh is that an answer to somebody there? Okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> stop reading the chat. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you ever so much, Freya. That was really, really interesting and very helpful. Thank you. Um, everybody is saying thank you in the chat, but we will stay for a bit longer just in case anybody is desperately typing away with a question for you. But yeah, thank you ever so much to everyone for coming. Um, at present, we don't have our next speaker lined up. We are always on the lookout for speakers. We can talk about anything. We are very broad in our topics, anything really to do with R, but also data research and coding more generally. As you saw today, this one was about GitHub and Git. So if you would like to give a talk and are keen to share something, or you know of someone you have seen deliver a talk elsewhere and you would like them to come and give a talk to our ladies, please do give us their details or reach out to them and we'd be very happy to have them as one of our next speakers. Yeah, thank you ever so much to everyone for coming. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you again. I'm happy to stick around a bit. I'm starting to lose my voice there. <laughs> so hopefully not too many questions. And yeah, anyone, if you want to carry on with the exercises and finish your pull requests, I'll um, definitely look at those later on. Uh, so question here, do you have any advice on parallel working forks, etc.? I found when working with a colleague, colleague that when we both fork and want to commit, we don't know how to deal with magic conflicts. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience with doing that, unfortunately. Uh, you kind of have to convince people that Git is worth <laughs> using before uh, you run into these kind of issues. Um, so no, I don't really have an expert answer. Maybe someone else in the chat has, is a bit further along and is already um, yeah, working together with folks and collaborating. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a more advanced topic, I think, than a basic introduction, sorry, <laughs> for the useless answer. I will turn the recording off now, just so everyone's aware if anybody does wish to come on camera, they didn't want to be recorded. <laughs>